subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show with China, a country which has received global flack and bad press in past few months. While its role in the spread of coronavirus is no secret, it has been systematically trying to secure both diplomatic and strategic upper hand with countries around the world. It has launched a multi-pronged strategy against its neighbor India in the same line. its army which holds dubious distinction for its extensive role in human rights violations and ethnic cleansing killed 20 unarmed indian soldiers who were headed in good faith to discuss the violation of agreement by chinese side in galwan valley of eastern ladakh the satellite images clearly expose the lie China and its People's Liberation Army has been speaking over its presence in the region. Presence of large number of fleets is also suggestive of the intent and plans Chinese army has been hatching. In a bloody massacre on the intervening night of 15th and 16th June, an unarmed group of Indian soldiers which was headed in good faith for inquiry over re-emergence of chinese camps in the galwan region of india's eastern ladakh suffered as many as 20 casualties after it met with the monstrous chinese brand of betrayal in a premeditated attack hundreds of so-called soldiers of china's people liberation army hurled barbed stones on indian men and attacked them with nail embedded wooden clubs Although Indian retaliation was fierce and inflicted heavy damage upon the Chinese side, but this unprecedented aggressive provocation has exposed the nefarious agenda and deep insecurities of Beijing. The incident has also exposed the sheer unprofessionalism of PLA, which now appears nothing short of a group of illiterate roadside goons who have no regards for the norms and protocols. Indian Prime Minister Mr Narendra Modi under whose leadership the country has twice avenged Pakistani notoriety reacted strongly to the incident and said India is a peaceful nation that holds enough valor and strength to give befitting reply to those planning to hurt its sovereignty Bharat shanti chahta hai lekin भारत उकसाने पर हर हाल में यथोचित हर हाल में यथोचित जवाब देने में सक्षम है जहां कहीं हमारे मतभेद भी रहे हैं हमने हमेशा ही ये प्रयास किया है कि मतभेद विवाद न बने डिफरेंसेस डिस्प्यूट्स में न बदले हम कभी किसी को भी उकसात नहीं है लेकिन हम अपने देश की अखंडता और संप्रभुता के साथ समझौता भी नहीं करते हैं एज अ बैटर ऑफ फैक्ट द चाइनीज एग्रेशन हैज ग्रोन मेनी नॉचर्स इन द पास फ्यू वीक्स the principal reason being the growing indian proactiveness in its border region along line of actual control china has been unnerved by building of indian infrastructure that will prevent it from making illegal intrusions in indian territory 
rise and build-ups in Galwan Valley were a result of growing Chinese frustration over the construction of around 250 kilometers Darbuk Shyok Dalat Bay Oldie Road in Ladakh, which will provide Indians an access to vantage points that have been used by Chinese for years against India. This road is opposite Aksai Chin Plateau that is already under illegal occupation of China. Experts believe that it is also due to India's major political decision vis-à-vis -vis Jammu and Kashmir in past few months that China has become uncomfortable. It is also New Delhi's firm stance of not joining China's dream project of Belt and Road Initiative that has turned its core leadership against India. Beijing thinks India can now make a move to regain its territories in Aksai Chin and Gilgit Baltistan, which will demolish its plans of Belt and Road Initiative and its flagship CPEC project in Pakistan. When India improves its infrastructure, uh, it becomes even more of, uh, 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 threatening for China. So if you add all these aspects together, you will realize that China will try to do its uh, utmost. It will use all options there to not uh, enable India to uh, build infrastructure. But the fact remains that China is an occupier in Aksai Chin, in Gilgit Baltistan, and it now is trying to intrude into Ladakh. Even after several rounds of senior generals level talks and a telephonic conversation between the foreign minister of two countries, Culminating on a positive note, the Chinese have refrained from de-escalation and have in fact increased troops at major points. India too has ramped up construction on its side. The key and the only Indian objective behind the construction of the road reach is to transport man and material at a greater speed in future. Communist China, on the other side, has a history of occupying territories. Its false claims and subsequent occupation of others' land and water is known to all. Whether it's Vietnam, Tibet or South China Sea, even a limited read of history tells it all about the cruel and expansionist China. And then it comes up with the barrage of lies and excuses for its actions. While it has unleashed army and suppressed its opponents when they are weak, the tone changes with an equal and even braver rival. Now, 相信双方能在两国领导人重要共识精神的指导下，妥善处理当前事态，共同维护好边境地区的和平与稳定，推动两国关系健康稳定发展。China may have fed a one-sided narrative to the whole world through its paid media propaganda. Its army is well aware of the history when Indian Army gave it a bloody nose in 1967 despite a less sophisticated weaponry. And today, when New Delhi commands one of the strongest armies of world with a robust nuclear arm, it is bound to get spooked. And India has made its foreign policy clear in the past few years. While a proposal of peace will be embraced with open arms, Aggression will be retaliated with double the force. While India and Nepal have deep roots of camaraderie, years of trade relations and centuries of people-to-people -people connect, their ties have experienced a brief spell of political confrontation over a territory comprising three districts. The Communist Government of Nepal, which according to many international observers and media houses has been under a significant Chinese influence, has even passed a bill calling it its own territory. However, the Nepali citizens who share the real friendly bond with India are of the belief that both countries should sit and work together and not hurt years of relationship.
the residents of Nepal who share a great connection with Indians for a number of reasons ranging from employment to trade to even interstate marriages are of the view that both New Delhi and Kathmandu should hold dialogue to resolve issues pertaining to the boundary. The reaction comes in the backdrop of Nepali's side unilaterally trying to change its political map which many international observers feel has been done at the behest of Beijing. Locals believe that there should not be any aggravation in the situation and the two sides should stick to negotiations for each other's welfare. A large number of Nepalese work in India. And this is not limited to just private sectors. But a number of them have also served in the Gorkha Regiment of Indian Army. Apart from trade and cultural ties, both countries have lately expanded the field of cooperation to other areas as well. The two countries have been relentlessly working on constructing roads and building a gas pipeline. India has also helped Nepal in laying railway lines connecting two countries. Their friendship was tested post-devastating earthquake in Nepal in 2015 and India has helped Nepal in reconstruction and regaining original shape. People say a piece of paper should not be powerful enough to create a dent in centuries-old relationship. अब Experts across the spectrum might have grown suspicious of foreign hand behind Kathmandu's decision, but Indian political class believes that no force would ever be able to break the ties between two countries as they were not merely based upon business and diplomacy but had thrived on personal connections. India and Nepal have had trivial confrontations in the past as well but they were diffused within a short span of time through talks. The two have shared a special connection in the past which the political transition and their alleged connections outside might not be able to alter. Moving on, Indian fight against the spread of the virus has been getting stronger with every rising sun. And it is not just the government, but the citizens too have rolled up their sleeves to confront and beat it. While the authorities are taking measures and coming up with ideas to challenge it at every possible level, citizens are not far behind. They have been giving wings to their thoughts which have now translated into innovations that are proving effective in battling the virus. India's first mobile laboratory for COVID-19 testing is ready to make a move to the rural and inaccessible areas of India. Launched recently by the Indian Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan, such efforts have been put in to ensure testing facilities in far-flung areas. The laboratory has the capability to perform 25 RT-PCR and 300 ELISA tests per day 
along with additional tests of TB and HIV as per the central government health scheme rules. It is being seen as a great step towards addressing the shortage of critical healthcare technologies in the country and moving towards the stage of self-sufficiency. This bus can move around across the uh, country in interior smallest towns of the city country and you can get the blood testing done. So this bus is equipped with the latest equipment. All those equipments which Dr. Lal or big hospitals or big government hospitals have are already fitted in this lab and you can perform basic tests for COVID patients to find out whether how many people have been infected by COVID. Along with the government, various companies across the country are also coming up with new and innovative ideas to give better protection to the people against the pandemic. A textile mill in Tamil Nadu's Coimbatore city is producing antiviral fabric that will be used to make masks. This fabric that has been made using Switzerland-based technology called ViroBlock which is a treatment made on fabric and is capable of killing or deactivating the virus within three minutes when it comes in contact with the cloth. This product has been tested by Hike internationally on the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the current virus that is having this pandemic. It's very important because what might work on some viruses might not work on this particular virus. So this chemical has been treated and that is why we chose it. Second, the chemical has a very unique characteristic. It's a very proprietary technology where the deactivation time on the virus is sub three minutes. Indian government and its citizens have been continuously devising new techniques to combat the virus that have also proved successful to some extent. Besides battling the virus with its innovative ideas, India is also looking forward to have the world's largest temporary COVID-19 hospital in its national capital to treat a surge in the number of COVID-19 cases. A spiritual centre has been roped in for the purpose and has the capacity to accommodate around 10,000 beds. Moving on. The doctors and medical staff in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan protested against the arbitrary orders of their transfers. They called the administration autocratic and urged it to immediately retract its hasty and unjust calls. The doctors who are at front line against the fight with the virus haven't been given essentials by the government and on being asked about the same, they are intimidated with transfers and expulsions. Senior physicians, resident doctors and their supporting staff in Hunza district of the illegally occupied Gilgit Baltistan took to streets against the authorities they call autocratic. They demonstrated against the callous and arrogant step of the administrators in which they issued transfer orders for those who complained about ill-equipped and contaminated medical compounds amid COVID-19 outbreak in the region. Doctors had earlier demanded personal protective equipments for all medical staff as one of them had contracted the virus owing continuous exposure. But authorities whose decisions amid the pandemic have already troubled the poor and deprived in the region took an unexpected call of transferring the staff, citing they were misbehaving. Now, the doctors demand retraction of the order and immediate procurement of all the essential equipment required during a patient handling. Now, we are here in the past. We are in the past. We are in the past. We are in the past. डीएचओ साहब के दफ्तर जाएंगे वहां पे वो अगला लाए अमल हमें वो क्या कहता है अगर वो डटा हुआ है तो मैं कहता हूं या हम सब कहते हैं कि हम भी अपने मौकुप पे डटे रहेंगे Doctors also said that such arbitrary decisions of Islamabad-backed local administrators were damaging the developments they had made in containing the virus spread while they did not have any issue working in any part of the region, they were not going to comply with the draconian orders being issued to them by any failed bureaucrat. 
they are even mulling resignation and retirement if authorities fail to deliver what they want. हमारे आइसोलेशन सेंटर पे और मुख्तलिफ स्क्रीनिंग में लैब में जहाँ पे भी हमारा काम कर रहे हैं लोग फ्रंट लाइन पे उनको कोई सहूलत नहीं दी जा रही है जब मैंने आवाज उठाया तो मेरी बदतमीजी हो गई हो गई है और मुझे वो उन्होंने ट्रांसफर किया है लेकिन उस ट्रांसफर से ना तो मुझे कोई खौफ है ना कोई डर है पूरा गिलगित बल्तिस्तान मेरा है जहाँ पे भी मैं जाऊँगा मैं ड्यूटी करूँगा लेकिन जिस अंदाज से उसने मुझे यहाँ से ट्रांसफर किया ये मुझे एक्सेप्ट नहीं है मैं रिटायरमेंट ले लूँगा मैं इस ड्यूटी को छोड़ूंगा लेकिन मैं इस जो पोस्टिंग उसने किया है उसको एक्सेप्ट नहीं करूँगा There are more than 1200 coronavirus cases in Gilgit Baltistan and there are high chances that authorities are underplaying the actual figures. Outside media cannot travel here and there is no credible monitoring body. The crisis has further been aggravated by a limited number of tests being done per day. The authorities in the region have completely disregarded the WHO guidelines. and have been diagnosing only those who are severely symptomatic and need urgent medical attention moving on police department in bangladesh has turned to indian practice of yoga to strengthen immunity amid growing pandemic they are involved in systematic practice of physical exercise positive thinking and meditation to keep themselves prepared The country has already reported around 7000 police personnel infected with virus. A large number of people belonging to the essential services departments of the country contracted virus in the line of duty. Even among the common population, the country is now registering an overwhelming rise in every day count. This has become a huge challenge for the government in a country where the settlements are dense and hospitals are limited. With more than 7000 Bangladeshi police personnel infected with the new coronavirus officials are hoping yoga will boost immunity and relieve stress for officers they have formed batches of a few dozens to practice asanas to attain peace recently over 200 officers in the capital dhaka attended a yoga session this was the first ever yoga session held for dhaka police since the beginning of the covid-19 outbreak according to program organizer and assistant police commissioner rajan saha this will strengthen officers mental strength so that they can do their job with a healthy mind তাই ডিউটি করতে গিয়ে তারা এফেক্টেড হচ্ছিল তো এই জন্য তাদের মানসিক শক্তি এবং শারীরিক সক্ষমতা যেটা আগে থেকে বৃদ্ধি করা দরকার ছিল এই জন্য আমরা এই যোগব্যায়ামটা তাদের জন্য চালু করেছি যাতে তাদের মানসিক শক্তি এবং প্রশান্ত মনে তারা তাদের কাজ করে যেতে পারে The Dhaka police plans to make yoga sessions routine for its officers who are serving on the front line of the country's battle against the new coronavirus Bangladesh has already reported more than 100000 cases of the virus and has reported near 1400 deaths as per official police data there were around 7400 policemen who had contracted the virus and among them 23 had succumbed to their illness je coronar har je bhabe biddhi peyechilo shekhan theke amra uttoron ghotechi amader force ekhon onek shusto je bhabe mittur har bere jacchilo tar theke amra uttoron ghotechi bangladesh has eased its restrictions on 31st may after two months of strict lockdown however the scenes have not turned out as per government expectations and prescribed guidelines the norms have been openly flouted which is playing a major role in the spread of the virus and a rise in the cases the economic activity too is gradually returning to pre covid normal 
the challenge is growing and is bigger in size compared to other countries in its neighbor and around the world as Bangladesh is among the most densely populated countries on the planet. Now, the question rises, if the Hasina government is doing enough, is it doing enough keeping her country's unique population dynamics in mind? Reopening of places that have potential to produce more COVID clusters is another major challenge for the country. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.